Welcome back everyone. Today we're taking a look at another kind of modulation. This time it's going to be amplitude modulation instead of frequency-based modulation. And when we talk about amplitude modulation, we usually are talking about tremolo. And the idea behind tremolo is to have our, have our signal vary up and down in level based on a, an LFO. So the LFO speed will govern how quickly it moves up and down, and the LFO depth is going to govern how much it goes up and down. Now to make a tremolo effect, there are actually a few different ways that we can do that. Um, the way that we're going to be talking about today is probably the simplest or most straightforward, and that is what is called a bias tremolo. And that is where we are actually modulating the amplification of a transistor based on changing its bias. The one we're going to be looking at today is the modified EA tremolo. This is a classic amongst the DIY community and it's also pretty straightforward and it allows us to look at yet another LFO topology to continue expanding our um, knowledge base for looking at a schematic and understanding what's going on. So if we look at the actual signal path for this bias tremolo, it's very simple. Our input comes in here we have a pull down resistor and an input capacitor to block DC and that goes immediately to the gate of our uh, MOSFET that we're using here. In this case, this symbol is a MOSFET symbol, this symbol is a JFET symbol, and this symbol is a BJT or bijunction transistor symbol. So we've got the three main um, transistor types in this circuit, but the signal is only really going through this MOSFET. So off of the drain of our MOSFET here, we have a resistor that goes to power, and that helps with the biasing of it, and then we have an output capacitor and a volume control, and then our signal goes out. So our input to output signal path is very, very short. We also have on the gate of the MOSFET this one mega ohm resistor that goes over to this section which is um, connected to power through this trim pot which is set up as a voltage divider. And this trim pot and this resistor are such that they are going to be biasing um, the gate of our MOSFET so that our signal rides in the middle of the supply voltage so that we don't clip when the voltage goes too high positive or too far negative. And this capacitor here acts as a charge reservoir. And with that we have looked at the entire signal path really but what makes the magic happen is that we haven't looked at the rest of the biasing of the MOSFET. So the um, source of the MOSFET comes through a 180 ohm resistor, which is pretty small, but then there are two, there are two um, paths to ground in parallel here. One is this 1K2 resistor, which is a fixed resistance, and then we have this 22 microfarad cap, but then this JFET Q2 is actually going to be functioning as a variable resistor. So the amount of resistance that is seen from this negative leg of the capacitor to ground is going to change. And it's going to change based on our LFO, which is this section. This is the LFO, and as you can see, it actually is about half of the whole circuit or half of the entire circuit 
And we're going to take a, a little bit of a look at this. At the heart of this LFO is a BJT transistor. And this BJT transistor um, has this network of resistors and capacitors that are connecting the, um, the base to the collector. Okay. Our emitter is tied to ground, and what happens is that this network of capacitors and resistors does kind of a similar thing as the op-amp based LFO that we looked at in the last video, in that these capacitors build up and store charge, but then the resistors allow that charge to leak out um, thus reducing the total amount of charge and so through the action of charging and discharging of these capacitors through the resistors we get our um, time varying signal right here off of the collector of the transistor. Now we have a 10k resistor that serves two functions really First is that this resistor helps with biasing of our transistor, but you'll also notice this LED here, and this LED is our rate indicator LED because the voltage at this junction point is going to go up and down. That means that we will have less or more or less voltage drop through this LED, which makes it get brighter and dimmer in time with our um, LFO. And then once we've got our transistor help brought up to bias, we have a very large resistor here between the base and the collector. We have three large value capacitors, and then we have a fixed resistor to ground, and we have a variable resistance to ground through here that controls our rate. And so this is just a, this potentiometer is just set up as a variable resistor, which means the total resistance along this path to ground is going to vary between 1k ohm and 101k ohm, which gives us a nice wide range of um, speeds for our LFO. And once we have that oscillating action going on through the charging and discharging of these capacitors, we go through a DC blocking capacitor that's right here because we don't want to introduce any kind of DC offset. And then we have a series of resistors and this potentiometer that govern the depth of our modulation or the amplitude of the voltage that is hitting uh, the gate of our JFET. So we go through a 120k ohm resistor and then we have a 250k ohm pot where the second lug will either come up here where we have 120k and 318k of a voltage divider which is not very much or it can come through here where we have 370k and 68k of a voltage divider which is going to drop quite a bit of voltage. So the voltage that's going to end up on the gate of our JFET is going to vary based on how we set our depth control because the more voltage that we end up putting on the gate of our JFET the less resistance we're going to have through Q2 that's the way that that our transistors tend to work is when you put something on the gate or the base of a transistor the more voltage you put the lower this resistance gets until it gets to its minimum resistance and then there is a region where as that resistance or as the voltage drops, the resistance is going to go up. So if we look at what that ends up doing to our signal path is that we have a single amplification stage here and it's the amplification of this is going to vary between when this JFET is at minimum resistance and when it's at maximum resistance. And so the amplitude of the signal that's going to come through this amplification stage is going to be weaker and stronger in time with our LFO. 
And that's really all there is to it. It's a really, really simple circuit when we break it down into its blocks. We have our amplification stage, which looks like this, and we have our LFO, which looks like this, and then we have a little bit of a power section over here, and that is the entirety of the circuit. This is our amplification stage where the amplification factor is determined by this, and the resistance of this is determined by the voltage being output by our LFO. Really, really simple, really straightforward, but if you didn't if you didn't break it down in its constituent parts, you could look at this and go, I have no idea what's going on. But now that we're able to break it down into its component blocks and start looking at it, it makes it a lot easier to understand what's going on. I hope that this was useful for you. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, subscribe so that you can be notified of when the next video hits. And until then, take care.